In a previous video, I uh, showed you an AM modulation, about 50% in each one of these uh, side bands and 100% here. So there's a lot of uh, energy here that is being wasted in this form of modulation. We can get uh, more modulation if we're, get, we're able to get rid of this carrier and re-inject it on the receive side of the equation. Well, as it turns out, I can uh, generate a double sideband signal, which is what that would be, with suppressed carrier. It's very easy to do with the uh, uh, Rigel uh, DG4102. So let me do that. And here we go with the double side band suppressed carrier. The carrier is gone and the, all the energy is now on these two side bands and they're up, up near 100% here. What single side band is, is a very common HF uh, mode of operation, NVHF for that matter. Uh, we get rid of one of these and usually just to use a filter to get rid of one of these then all of the energies in this carrier that would be upper sideband, or all of the energy is in this carrier, which is lower sideband. Uh, no carrier, which you re-inject in the receiver to uh, detect this. And you notice we have the same thing we had before. We have uh, plus or minus 3 kilohertz, which is 71.97. 7203 is plus 3 kilohertz from the carrier, which was uh, right here. I'll re-inject the carrier. Now the uh, spectrum analyzer is sweeping at uh, 6 seconds per division here, so that's why uh, it takes time for these uh, the screen to refresh here. So now we're back to the AM carrier. Now another, another thing I could do is I'm going to remove the internal modulation on this and put external modulation on it. Now what I have is a modulation from a separate uh, channel on the DG4102. This is 300 uh, hertz, minus 300. This is minus 3 kilohertz. This is plus 300 and plus 3 kilohertz. So this would be a typical voice range. And as you see, the modulation has changed. The uh, carrier is up here and this is down here. But of course, when we make this double sideband suppressed carrier, wait for it, <laughs> this comes up. The reason these are at 50% is due to the math that's being used in this particular spectrum analyzer. The peak envelope power is still the same as it was before, uh, but uh, it's dropped down. But if we just change the uh, scale here a little bit, we can uh, bring that up. So each of those tones is the same. And you'll notice right here, there is a little pip, and that's the suppressed carriers down about uh, uh, to about 5% or less. So it's down about uh, 10 to 20 dB somewhere in this particular instance. Here's 300 Hertz negative and 3000 Hertz minus that is and plus 300 plus 3 kilohertz. The reality of course is that we don't need to have both the lower side band and the upper side band here. This would be lower side band. So if we left those two and filtered out these two using a crystal filter or some such uh, a method of getting rid of uh, unwanted spectrum, that would be lower side band. And of course, this would be upper side band if we uh, put the filter so that it only passed these upper two tones here. And that uh, is how we get the best efficiency spectrum wise. As you can see, uh, the bandwidth then is only about 3 kilohertz wide, not uh, 
6 kilohertz wide like in an AM and double sideband. So this is uh, the most spectrum efficient uh, voice mode that's available to us. Here we have the uh, time domain of the, the AM signal. As you see uh, we have from here to here the cursors are set in its three kilohertz, 3.030 it says here, it's within the time base accuracy. Uh, and uh, this is approximately in the center here and in the center here uh, so that uh, we have an accurate measurement there. The, the carrier frequency here can't be seen because it's um, 7 megahertz so it's much much higher in frequency than this uh, 3 kilohertz modulation that's here. But if I spread that out and recenter it you will see the uh, modulation is going up there and I'll keep going. There's a 7, uh, seven megahertz there. Uh, let me uh, just drop this down again. Now you can see the modulation back. So there we go. I, I just moved it so we can get to uh, some actual signal there. Double sideband with two tones gives us, um, and with a single tone, excuse me, gives us two tones at the output as we showed in the uh, video. Um, and uh, so we have six kilohertz here. Two of these, if I go from here to here, it'd be three kilohertz. But I've got a tone that's minus uh, three kilohertz and one is plus three kilohertz, which means the double sideband pattern of the two tones will be twice as uh, high in frequency. So the three kilohertz becomes six kilohertz as shown here. As you see, we have 6.024. And of course, if I put the two tones in, like we did before, uh, on the uh, spectrum display, if I go from this point to this point, that's the the uh, 300 uh, hertz. But of course, uh, because there's two tones, uh, the actual measurement there is 680 instead of 340 or thereabouts, which is what the actual tone is. Um, again, because of the way the um, envelope on the display goes, just like we showed with the 3 kilohertz. Uh, there's a tone that's below and there's a tone that's above the frequency, so a total of 680 instead of 340 or so.